Would you like to know when the property market crashes? Well, who wouldn't, right? You can make better decisions. Well, did you know there's this little known economic theory that helps you predict exactly when the property market will crash? Well, it does. It does exist. And now you can use it to your advantage. So let's give you a quick recap of what is the 18-year property cycle from a high level and also where you can go if you want to find out more information. Yeah, if this is a new concept to you, then go check out Property Hub University. We've got a course on this subject. It's really visual. It's the easiest way of understanding it. So just go to propertyhub.net slash university, completely free. We've also recorded a few podcasts on this over the years if you want to go and do a search. So the whole concept of the 18-year cycle is first of all that property prices are cyclical they will boom and then crash in a predictable way and it'll happen over a cycle which is on average 18 years long and this has been shown to go back for about 200 years and within those 18 years it's predictable as well things play out in a set pattern that I'll talk you through now. So first of all, there is a crash. And for the first four years, there's a process of that crash playing out, prices finding the bottom, people not quite sure how far they're gonna go, but the bottom is found and then prices stay there because everyone's too scared to get back into the market. So prices remain low and no one's interested in property. Then we get into the next 14 years of the cycle, all of which is growth. And that's split into two different phases of seven years. So first of all, you have seven years of property prices growing very slowly, gradually, gently, as people regain their confidence from the crash that's just happened. At the end of that seven years, you then get seven years of more aggressive growth. At the start of that period is something known as the mid-cycle wobble, where prices either stop growing or fall a little bit. But then the more rapid growth begins and lenders start getting more confident and really putting some fire back into the market. As you get towards the end of that seven year period, that's when you get the real mania. That's when you get what you should truly call the boom or what Fred Harrison, who discovered this, called the winner's curse. The last two years of the cycle are when you're in real speculative phase. Everyone is so confident and is getting so carried away that anyone will pay anything for any property and will be completely unconcerned about what it's fundamentally worth or what it's been worth in the past. They're just willing to pay more because they believe that property prices are just going to keep going up and up and up. But of course, that's not what happens. Just when everyone thinks that things are completely different now and prices will keep going up forever and everyone's going to be fabulously wealthy, that is when you get the crash. Everything stops, lenders get spooked, values fall, no one's interested in property anymore, and the whole cycle starts again. So that gives you an overview. The mid-cycle wobble lasted longer than normal cycles. It was almost that wobble area where there was little to no growth over a number of years. Normally, it lasts one or two years, the mid-cycle wobble, but it lasted arguably double that, four years. And there's a number of reasons why you could say that's happened. People will point to Brexit, and yes, there was uncertainty around that time. But besides the mid-cycle wobble taking longer, we've only just started to see a growth phase. Last year, we had double-digit growth. We have only just started, but because the growth that we saw last year in particular was so extreme, and in particular was so extreme when compared to people's assumptions about what would happen, which actually that property prices would fall, people may believe that actually we're in the real end game here. It's easy to think that we must be in this winner's curse phase, the final two years of the cycle, because property prices grew so fast last year, and particularly because there's a whole narrative about how high property prices are, I think it's easy to think, well, this is it. Property prices can't go up too much further. They're already too high. So clearly, if we're seeing growth like this now, this must be it. Within the next couple of years, it all comes crashing down. The cycle says that that shouldn't happen yet, so I think basically what we're trying to address here is what a lot of people have been saying, which is like, are we in the winner's curse now? Is the market going to crash in the next couple of years? And our belief is no. There are a few reasons for that. The first reason, it's clearly not anomalous to have a year, even multiple years of double digit growth in that seven year aggressive growth phase of the cycle, but not within the last two years. So if prices did continue strongly this year, then fall back a little bit for a couple of years, still grow strongly, but not quite as extreme, that would not be abnormal. But there are another couple of reasons as well. One is that lending is still relatively restrained and lending is a huge part of the cycle. But at the moment, lending is still pretty restrained. 
various measures were put in place after the last crash to try to prevent some of the mad stuff that happened from happening again and all those are still in place also criteria are still pretty strict it's certainly not the case that anyone can just walk in off the street and get a mortgage for anything as the cycle progresses and people get greedy and banks get greedy i strongly suspect that that is going to change the other reason is the sentiment isn't there at the moment yes people are talking about property prices growing whereas really when you're in bubble mode people should be seeing the exact same thing happening around them but thinking the opposite so they'll get outbid and see prices going up and that's just going to make them want to pay more because they believe it's going to keep on happening so that gives you an idea of where we're at but where are we now let's run you through how and where you should invest over the coming years. I'm gonna break it down into years because your strategy should change as the market develops. This is gonna sound weirdly non-specific, but the answer for me is just keep buying and buy pretty much anywhere. The reason I say that is that where you buy and what you buy becomes far more important as time goes on and we'll come to that soon. So the main thing to do is to keep on buying. Of course, we've got our favourite areas. We've shared our hotspots for this year back at the start of the year. We did an episode on that. If you go to our YouTube channel, Property Hub UK, you can find that video as well to see the areas that we're particularly targeting for our fund and for our investors and personally as well. But in the kind of market that we're expecting, it's hard to go too wrong. And that's exactly what we'll be doing in 2022, 23 and 24. We'll be focusing as investing as much as we can in our preferred areas and yes we may adapt those areas slightly year by year but really this is a time when you buy something if you follow the cycle and you believe in it you're going to see strong growth and be rewarded relatively quickly so that's a really easy path to follow for the next few years but what do you do and what will we do in 2025 and 2026 well a strategy you could deploy if you're interested is trading in and out now this is not for the faint-hearted but for those who are braver have a higher appetite for risk then you may consider this strategy and this strategy is going into areas that are generally classed as not as desirable not that desirable generally but they'll do well and the reason why is if you look back at previous cycles areas of the country that have kind of been left well alone. People haven't really touched. Property prices haven't really kicked on. It hasn't really seen much capital growth. Towards the end of a property cycle, it's those areas that have been neglected, forgotten about, and just people have had no interest in investing in, start to do really, really well. Why? Well, it's because it's where the last bit of value is. So if you can manage to get in for the period of highest growth and get out before it all comes crashing down, that's what you should do. The only problem is most people are terrible at doing it. Everyone thinks that they can do it, but whether it's with property or the stock market or anything else, experience and observation tells you that people on average cannot do this. So if you believe that you can and you've got the confidence and the knowledge and everything else, then go for it. If you are going to be buying for a long-term hold late in the cycle, then this is where location and quality in particular become very important. Earlier in the cycle, I was saying it wasn't. Now I'm saying it is. Yes, absolutely. So we will be doing two different things in 2025 and 2026. We will be focusing on really, really high quality assets in high quality areas. A very specific strategy. We're not going to stray away from that. We're going to be very focused during that time period because we know that strategy will be well rewarded in the medium term. Now, does that change things? We believe that the market will crash in 2026 at the earliest and possibly further out. We've said multiple times on the podcast that it's not an exact science, it's not an exact template. And sometimes you have runs that are shorter than the 18 years, and sometimes you have runs that are longer. But besides the mid-cycle wobble taking longer, we've only just started to see a growth phase. It's really simple in 2022, 23, and 24 what to do. If you believe that the crash will happen in 26, then you start adapting 25. But for now, it's really easy. It's just don't miss out. Okay, you've watched this video. Hopefully you've learned a lot. Let's keep that momentum going by doing two things. One, subscribe to this channel. The button's right there, it's easy. Secondly, also easy, go subscribe to The Property Podcast where you can learn so much more every single week. Just search Property Podcast wherever you listen.